All right, here we are uh, with our first ever Kubota purchase here. This is a 2017 KX91-3S Super Series 2. Um, man, I've never had a Kubota before. Everyone's always ranting and raving about how nice Kubotas are. I honestly, I don't know. I would rank this probably, probably number three in terms of excavators that I have had um, by a lot of Takuchis and Bobcats. Um, so this thing, I mean, it has power. It's a 30 horsepower, 30 horsepower Kubota diesel. Uh, this is a 70, 7,100 pound machine, cab heat AC, no radio, 2017 model, um, 12 inch bucket, um, 2,700 hours on this unit. We are doing some extensive rust work. I'm not really sure what for an excavator, I'd call it extensive rust work. It was pitting all up the backside here and stuff, sanded it all down. Um, threw some primer on there from Tractor Supply. And we're going to use the Farm and Implement Kubota Orange right there. Picked that up from Tractor Supply as well. <clears throat> um, so the first thing is, is the paint on this thing for 2017 is really poor, poor quality. Um, like I said, the rust everywhere obviously it was in a salt environment driven around probably in the winter on a trailer and wasn't washed a lot but still you shouldn't get like i've had freaking 20 year old machines that were from the same area um and they have way way less rust so this paint is not that great the doors on this machine are just flimsy tinfoil doors there's nothing to them you get a bobcat the door is actually solid steel you get a takuchi the door is like solid these things are just super, super flimsy. There's nothing, there's nothing to it. It's, it's like 16th or just over 16th inch sheet steel. Um, and yeah, they're just, they're just cheap quality. Um, the serviceability on this machine, sorry, someone's doing burnout out there or something. Serviceability on this machine, absolutely terrible compared to Bobcat and, and Takeuchi. You cannot access anything in this in this machine. I don't know how the other Kubotas are, but this KX91-3, um, you can't get to anything. So, for example, right here next to the cab, where there's a hood that folds up. You have your hydraulic tank, your valve body. Down, back in, here, back in there, down there is a joint for your... Um, for your drive levers that comes up into this valve body uh this valve body over here um one of those levers is sticking so you can't access anything um you can get to these levers under here the problem's not under here oh well it's locked but because you have to have the machine running to be able to move these which is really dumb because the electronic lock you have to be in here running it to move this back and forth to work on it to find where it's sticking up but this this sticks it sticks it gets stuck um but you can't get under that to be able to work on it so you know there's little things like that like the bobcat one was a pain in the butt to do but at least it was all right there you could get to it um this is down and then it's down back in there it runs under the floor and then it runs under there which you can't get to from underneath or from the side um cab doesn't fold up on this unit you can't get to anything over there and then it runs up underneath somewhere in there you can't get to it you'd have to pull this entire um unit out to be able to service any of that stuff the um filters are all super difficult to get to um you got one packed way down in there oil filter you can't even you can't get in there um we just did the ac belt what a nightmare that was again there's no space to get in there to do anything um, it's just, there's, there's no, no space. I don't know why it was designed like this, but your radiators here and look at this, you have an added radiator cap because you can't access the main radiator cap. So they added, they're like, oh wow, we're going to engineer this. So you can't get to the cap and then we'll add another cap where it's accessible. Um, there's just that, that's what it comes down to for me, especially parts, parts for this machine. Uh, I got the pin and bushing for this, the pin and bushing for not for that. 
um, and the pins and bushings for down here was uh, two grand. If I wanted to get the pin and bushings for up there, it's another 400 bucks. Most expensive excavator parts I've ever had to buy, by far. Um, the Takuchi, we did pins and bushings, all of them. We did pins and bushings all up and around. Uh, I think it was 600 bucks, um, and there was twice as many pins and bushings as we're placing on here on this unit for two grand. And it's the same exact pins and the same bushings, um, but Kubota prices are $300 for some of these pins and $80 for bushings. So serviceability for this specific model, not for Kubota's, all, I'm not throwing all Kubota's under the bus here. Um, I'm, if there was a bigger Kubota and it had more room, I don't know. But I've had other Bobcats that were 7,500-pound class machines. I've had Takeuchis that were 7,500-pound class machines. And you can get to everything on them easy to service them. Like I said, we've done drive cables on the other machines. We've done the actual whole um, Takeuchis. That whole stick drive is actually its own valve body. The line hydraulic lines run right to it. Um, and uh, filters. And I've never had a... A machine where you can't even access your oil filter. Um, pretty much, yeah, the cost of parts, accessibility. I wouldn't buy another one of these KX91-3s. Um, you got your AC up here. We have that off because we had to, the fan imploded. We had to replace that. <clears throat> um, this machine's going to get a complete paint job. The cab in these is pretty user-friendly. Um, not a whole lot of space. So... Not not a whole lot of space at all if you're a uh, six foot. Um, you got to crawl in here and like twist and get into this cab. Uh, it's not really designed for a bigger bigger person. Um, let's see. It starts right up. Uh, throttle's easy to use. It's basic. There's not even a radio in this thing. And again, it's a 2017 model, so I'm just surprised that there's no radio. Um, you know, window lift and everything is simple to use. Door design is nice. You got a you got a lock right there. I'm not going to do use it because it's wet paint, but um, this is how you unlock the door once it's locked on the side. That's pretty convenient. I like that. Door handle's nice, easy to use. Um, blade is nice. You got that. Uh, you got the angle blade on these units, so it's pretty convenient. <clears throat> and Kubota does like the the boom is offset to the side instead of being in the center like it is on the Takeuchi and the uh, Bobcat. So that is nice to have that offset for the visibility. Um, and I mean, these are good homeowner machines because throw this behind an F-150 or whatever, it only weighs 7,000 um, pounds. But uh, for example, a bucket's $2,000 for this machine. A bucket for the Takeuchi, $800, same exact quality. Um, so, you know, the price difference is pretty pretty ridiculous when you have to do maintenance on these i didn't realize that the pins and stuff were going to be so expensive or i probably wouldn't have bought this um i mean it's still going to be a decent buy but everything in here was just i don't know you're gonna have to see about getting those how, how to get the filter and stuff out there might be a panel on the bottom that you can take out but it doesn't look like it so um yeah uh, filters for this machine were also ridiculously priced. I got aftermarket ones for... I got the whole set for, I think, 180 on one of the sites. Um, but yeah, it's got the power. It's Hydraulics aren't as balanced as a Takeuchi. They're a little bit snappy, I think, especially the boom. is kind of like a Bobcat, where the boom is way more responsive than any of the other features, where, like, the Takeuchi, everything is really well balanced. Um, and this thing, the other thing about this is... The, the weight distribution is way off. Um, if you're traveling with the blade in the back, it helps. But you shouldn't have to travel with the bit blade in the back to be balanced. Also, you know, if the blade's in the back and you're turning and you don't realize where the back of that blade is, you could hit something. Um, if you extend this boom out and you want to go up or down... This whole machine, it just bounces like one of those cars with the with the airbags that bounces back and forth on the pavement. That's what this does, like really bad. Worse than Bobcat and worse than the Takeuchi that have the same class machines with the same 30 horsepower engines. Well, Bobcat uses the Kubota engines in their older stuff. 
they don't use it in the new stuff, but um, and Takuchi runs the Yanmar, but still 30 horsepower is 30 horsepower. Um, the power does seem to be there. The tracks for single for one speed, there's this is a two speed machine for speed one. This thing tracks excessively fast. Um, and then speed two is just a slight bump up from speed one, where like the Takuchi and the Bobcat. Your, your single operating speed is, well, not single, but operating speed one is a nice, slow travel. Um, speed two gets you to where you need to go. This one is faster on speed one than either Bobcat or Takeuchi's speed number two. So on speed one, this is faster than their speed two. Um, <clears throat> it seems to be, like, a little faster than it needs to. So... Um, those are the three, those are the two machines I'd mainly buy is Bobcat and Takeuchi, and then I figured I'd get the Kubota, because it was going for the right price, um, but now the price isn't really that great, because I didn't know I was going to need pins and bushings, I buy most of the stuff sight unseen, so, and this design here for that auxiliary hydraulics is kind of weird, but it is what it is, um, this video is getting kind of long, I might go make a video about the Takeuchi that I got sitting out there for sale right now. That we, I just finished that yesterday. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Again, this is a KX. This is 2017 KX91-3. I hope this helps you if you're thinking about buying one of these. Um, and thanks for watching.